Hey everybody and welcome back to Exotic Car Hacks. Now today is a really bad day and I know it sounds really terrible, right? But I was supposed to be doing a video right here with you guys except not at this desk but instead in front of a 992 GT3 Touring. And so what we're gonna talk about today is not only why I'm doing a video here rather than in front of GT2 Touring, or GT3 Touring, but we're also gonna be talking about the scam and the crazy breach of contract that these guys at Champion Porsche are running right here in Pompano Beach, Florida. Now, if you watched our previous video on Excel Auto, you've seen that there's a lot of scammy and really bad dealerships right here in South Florida. So I've been warning people day in and day out around some of these scams and some of these tricks, but this latest one is yet another one to add for the books. So I'm gonna take you through that, but I'm gonna tell you why it's actually a really sad thing. And it's not because of the car, because there are cars to be bought everywhere. And thankfully I'm rich, so I could give less of a shit and I can buy it somewhere else. But the main issue here, the main thing that you gotta kind of protect yourself from is to know what's happening out there in the car world so you can use that clearly to ensure you're not falling victim of the same exact malpractice or breach of contract that these guys try to pull on me today, which I think is really important for you guys to know. And the problem with Champion is that if you have been following car news anytime, you can actually Google this. If you actually Google uh, anything from Champion Porsche scam or, or anything like that, you'll notice that there is an actual huge article right there. Like the first thing that comes up for the Justice Department, former salesman of Porsche dealership pleads guilty to over $3 million of fraud scheme involving non-existent rare Porsche models. So right there that tells you the type of legal trouble they've been in before and the type of scams they were pulling from their dealerships. This isn't their first attempt at doing something and that time was blamed on a salesperson there. So they, they were doing things out of trust which we're gonna go back to the salesperson because it plays a role here too. But one of the things that happened on this particular case is that at the end of the Justice Department article, if you actually read it in full, which is why I was hoping things would have changed there, you start to realize that they said that the actual dealership made whole all the customers that were basically due money or allocations, which would tell you that they basically cared or basically they didn't wanna get sued or they didn't want the negative publicity. So this is what they basically did, right? They said, okay, we're gonna pay back all these people because they obviously thought they were doing business with uh, Champion, but in reality, they were not. So bottom line is we wanted them to basically get a second chance. And this was the first time I had ever decided to do business with Champion because time and time again, they have been famous for their markups on cars, uh, which were outrageous, like 150,000 over for a car, uh, constantly you know, not wanting to do business uh, with anybody locally in the past. And, and it was constantly about money. Uh, that we've heard of cars being held hostage to markups even after customers had ordered them. So there's all types of crap going on there. But you know, in the world we're in today, markups are very common on exotic cars, especially rare, hard to get cars. And now, while five years ago, I would have told you there's nothing really rare about a base GT3 car, with the amount of supply shortcuts that have occurred in the market, as we've covered multiple times in many videos, obviously it is a lot harder uh, today to get uh, an order that is on the ground ready to go. And so often dealers charge some kind of markup for a rare or decent spec car that is there. Now, it is very common in the space that GT3 and GT3 Touring cars are bringing anywhere from 50 to 75K markups and, and Porsche dealers are really trying to now be forced to sell to local uh, clients instead of inter like national clients in other states because because the actual corporate is is really starting to look at all manufacturers are this isn't just a Porsche thing where cars are being sold and if dealers are basically encouraging flippers and individuals that want to basically resell their cars so in order to you know basically combat that, they plug in your zip code and they tell you if you're eligible to buy a car and they kind of don't let you get away with any type of Montana registration or anything and it force you to basically pay your taxes locally. So they kind of guarantee that you're, you're gonna not take that profit from the taxes you're saving and so on and so forth. So this is a very common practice. There's nothing wrong with that. This is more of a corporate thing across all manufacturers. But where Porsche goes above and beyond to screw its clients is not just on the markup, but that's on their breach of contract. Now I'll tell you how they try to get you. So 
I spent a couple of hours basically negotiating, actually, let me rephrase that. I spent a couple of days negotiating uh, an entire uh, markup from over 100K on a car, uh, now down to just, uh, I want it to be at 70K over, right? So that was my goal, was basically I'm gonna pay 70,000 over. And I was gonna send the car out of state so I didn't have to pay taxes. And obviously they stopped me there, so they said, you know, we're not doing that. I said, no problem, then I can't come up to 70 over. That's basically the maximum we can pay. So I came down to 55K over. You know, they were, I was at 50, they were at 55. I said, you know what, it's just five grand, it doesn't matter. Who cares, right? And so, uh, it, it, you know, again, we're not gonna argue a five grand over 300K car. And I said, it's not a big deal. But then here's the problem. So they first get you with this whole idea of over, then they get you with, well, you gotta pay full sales tax. Again, not necessarily their particular issue, but then here's where the, the little tricks come in. So if we take a look at the sticker, and I wanna show you specifically the sticker here uh, on this particular car, and as you can see right here with the sticker, one of the things you'll notice is that the car itself is a 205K sticker, which is a fairly average built GT3 Touring. But here's something interesting. If you look at the last line here on the sticker, it clearly states that the car comes with a one year uh, free maintenance or up to 10,000 miles. So basically it's like, hey, each of these cars, it comes with its first maintenance basically included. So you don't have to worry about the cost of maintenance, right? So I found it kind of odd as I'm kind of finally ready to pull the trigger and I said I would wire tomorrow. I even called, double checked with the salesperson, which was absolutely the worst and I would never ever recommend anyone use this guy. His last name is something called Prokopowitz Mirik. Like I would tell you, Never deal with that guy. Probably one of the worst car salesmen in the history of car salesmen. Uh, so that, that's that. But then two, the, the main thing is, so I noticed that this guy sends me this form and I go like, hey, so this, this car has an extra $3,000 due for service. And I'm like, how can a car have $3,000 due for service? One, when it's brand new. And two, uh, on top of that, like I thought the service was free, right? So this doesn't make sense. But why would a car that's brand new with no miles need service? So here's what, what's interesting. Then he goes, well, no, that's not for service. That's for a maintenance plan. And I'm like, maintenance plan for what? He goes, it's to prepay your third year service because that's $3,000 by itself. So you're saving some money. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't really care. I barely keep my cars a year and a half, right? Like I'm not gonna keep a car five years. So who cares? So I asked him the day before, I said, hey, like, I don't want this. So like, basically like, I don't care for it. He said, okay. So I said, hey, send me a buyer's order. I even responded, as you can see here from my email, clearly, I mean, a, a very clear email that says, hey, everything looks good here, except I don't want this maintenance plan again. Please send me an updated total uh, and buyer's order without it. And then I will go ahead and wire because I'm paying cash for this car. So I said, not an issue at all here. I'm gonna send the wire. But then here's something interesting that happens. He calls me the next day. He goes, well, if you don't want the maintenance plan, we're just not gonna sell you the car. So I'm like, okay, so you're basically not only extorting me of a markup, which is fine, I understand why that's happening, and I understand this supply and demand, it's a fair thing, but now last minute, after we spend days negotiating, arguing, and finally coming true, and even accepting to pay tax on the deal, even validating the address, being local, and all these things, you're not coming up and adding extra stuff. And this has been not so common in the exotic car world, but very common in the normal car world. You'll see AutoNation do crap like this with like, you're paying for ceramic coating. When I tried to buy my Rolls Royce, I saw the sticker on there, not at these guys, with those guys at Bremen at least were intelligent and knew how to treat a high dollar client. But you know, there was an $11,000 charge for wheels and tires maintenance. Like, I mean, like who, who needs $11,000 charge for that? But so they obviously remove that when you're, you know, high net worth client who's bought a lot of cars in general or, or has the type of collection I have. Not only, you know, they've removed their marked up and given you a discount off of SRP, but in addition to that, they also didn't even attempt to. The first thing they said to me is ignore the sticker. These things aren't really there uh, for you. So I said, okay, that's fine. But here on the Porsche side, the complete opposite. Basically, go screw yourself we're not gonna do anything, and we're gonna basically sell you a maintenance plan for a service that's already included on the sticker with the car, and you're forced to buy it basically for an additional $3,000 in extortion. So listen, it's, it's, it really comes down to principle and breach of trust, and I'll tell you why. It's not even about the three grand, we're already at 5K over, so I said, all right, I'm already losing an extra 5K, fuck it, right? But now we're saying 5K plus 3K, so now we're like 8K over, again, right? Like he keeps adding up. 
And the real big issue is that the night before I had validated and checked that the person, again, saying, hey, this isn't gonna be again sold elsewhere or like something happening, do I need to come down and finalize? Today, and the sales guy, that's why I told you, the worst sales guy on the planet, don't ever do business with that Merrick or Champion or Sport or Champion Porsche for any given reason, it's just complete trash. But one of the things that you have to realize is that, one, they're forcing you to buy something that isn't even needed, that doesn't even do anything. Basically, they're like enrich themselves outside of the markup. And, and, and that's, that's a problem. But, but the problem is that the, what they're selling you is already included with the car partially. So like, it's a double scam. And then the guy tells me that same night that he'll just send me a buyer's order in the morning and it's fine. And so I went and ordered 27 grand in parts, including like a roll cage, a set of wheels, tires, suspension, and exhaust for a car that now they don't wanna sell me unless they extort me an extra $3,000. Now here's where, like, again, does it matter? No, because I said, again, you have money, you can buy a touring anyway. It's not like that rare of a car. And I can pay uh, a bigger markup or whatever it is to a reputable dealer that I don't mind enriching because of the way they treat their customers. But what you have to be able to understand here is that one, now it's gonna cost me at least $2,500 to change the finish on the wheels because a new color on the next car I find that I want may not be the same color, so that's not gonna work. And, and the big thing to learn here, the big learning lesson here is one, you have to read the documents you're presented, but two, you have to also really pay attention because as, I mean, even Rob Freddy said this, and I said this in the Excel video, you know, when a dealer has really shady past practices, it should be a pretty good indicator that they haven't learned their lesson and they're gonna continue to try to scam and continue to try to constantly greed their way into every little penny they can, even if they're at the disbenefit of their clients. So this is, has been a complete breach of contract by the guys at Champion Porsche. I would never recommend anyone in the exotic car space to even buy a car there. They actually even put, posted a car they bought from one of the members in our groups recently for like 35,000 more than they bought it like a month ago. Uh, and again, like a car that's not even worth that, that's gonna crash being nothing. Obviously they don't pay attention to exotic car hacks and nor do they care because they don't mind extorting their clients out of every penny they can get, even when it's not in their benefit to do so, you know? But in this particular case, listen, the point here is I'm warning you guys so you don't fall victim to that. Read your contracts, make sure these dealers aren't scamming. The tables are turning, the environment is changing. And so these big franchise dealers that think they're really cool because some idiot there makes like 100K a year and somehow he believes he's like God's gift to earth because right now his cars are hot. They're gonna realize real quick how the power falls back on the consumers very quickly as the markets start to dry out liquidity start to play out. And more importantly, people aren't paying those who screwed them during the times when they could have helped them. So this is my review of Champion Porsche, a big thumbs down and an absolute do not do business with type of dealership and do not even do business with that crappy Marek guy, even if he moves dealerships, because they tend to duplicate like cockroaches and jump places to places and get into new dealerships and basically do that. So don't get into that, you know, save yourself the money, save yourself the trip, and just assume that any car you buy there is just gonna turn into a disaster experience. And guys, this has been another review for Exotic Car Hacks. Again, we are doing our best to protect all of our viewers and members from the types of scam going out out there in the dealer space. We've seen it with Excel, we've seen it with Champion, you know, and we've seen it with all these franchise dealers out there going out of their way to basically hurt their clients. And this is yet another example. So be, be careful, pay attention, and again, don't forget to like, turn on notifications, and subscribe, and leave a comment. Have you seen another kind of shady scam going on, just like Champion Porsche pulled out? Uh, if you've seen something like this going on somewhere else, put it in the comments, I'll investigate it. Maybe we'll do a further video about it, okay? I appreciate you guys watching. On to my search again for another 992 GT3 Touring, uh, something exciting. If you have one, let me know. If you have something really worth looking at, a nice PTS car, and you are know of one at a dealership where they are actually good at treating your customers, let me know, I'd love to buy it, so let's get in touch, okay? Otherwise, guys, I will catch you in the next video for Exotic Car Hacks.